going. So lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining. Um, for those who just joined a little tiny bit later, um, my name's Nadine and I'm just sitting in for Sarah Lake today because um, she's been lucky enough to be asked to head up a fam trip to Antigua with um, Royalton Resorts. So she's got a bunch of your colleagues from the travel agency world with her and I said I'd sit in today because she's on that flight. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Stephen and he's going to introduce Team Tobago to you. Thank you very much, Nadine, um, and uh, welcome, welcome all. Um, welcome to the first uh, Tobago dedicated webinar for uh, 2024. Um, if you've joined us in the past, um, we have run the Discover Tobago um, series. Um, this series, the next few months, um, we'll be running a, a, a presentation each month, um, and the focus is going to be on the secrets of Tobago, I, or the, if I elaborate a little bit, the secret sides of Tobago. So slightly off the beaten track, and we're trying to introduce you to some of some some unique little things that um, that you can sell to your clients, and of course, come and visit yourself. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to do the um, the usual rigmarole of trying to share my screen without everything going the put. Look at that, and. So that, and then I shall click share. And hopefully, if somebody could just confirm that you can all see my screen yep. here. Excellent, yep, we can. fabulous. So first of all, my name is Stephen Smith. If you've seen me before in the previous um, presentations, I am the sales and marketing manager for the beautiful island of Tobago. Um, based here in the UK. Um, today, my guests are, first of all, you'll see Paige Ramnath, who's the operations manager for Tobago's newest hotel, uh, the Manta Lodge and Dive Centre. And uh, Paige will give you some insights into her beautiful property. It isn't just a dive centre. When you see some of the images, you'll understand it is a gorgeous, a beautiful boutique hotel. Um, and then following Paige, we will have Zalani Frank, who is one of Tobago's... Um, expert birding and nature uh, specialists. Um, he's one of our leading experts on birding and nature in the island. And yes, we could do a wonderful presentation as Alani would, could talk for an hour on the, the lights of the nature side of, Beach, of, of um, Tobago, but he's going to introduce you to some of the little secrets um, that this particular part of Tobago has to offer. So, Again, again, if you've joined us before, you'll know that I'd like to get everyone into the theme and the, in the feel of Tobago. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to show you a little video. Hopefully the, the sound will work on it. Um, show you a little vid video just to get you everyone in the vibe and in the feel. So everyone's just a bit more relaxed and more Tobago-fied. <laughs> New word. So without further ado, I shall press go, sit back, relax, and welcome to Tobago. It's only when I go abroad and I see what is out there and I come back and I measure against what is here, there is no comparison to beauty. Some writings of our history, it is said that Christopher Columbus called it Bella Fauna, meaning beautifully formed. Natural, beautiful, peaceful. <laughs> yes. I get emotional. That's why I'm here. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about nature, there is always something new, and especially in the tropics where there's such wide diversity. Persons can experience and have the awe associated with some of the beaches we have, aquatic life we have, some of the fascinating birds we have within a day, within a short period of time. You have the Caribbean Sea on one side, you have the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. On our doorstep, a fringe reef that wraps around the entire area. You have this huge amount of biodiversity and uh, you know, liveliness of the entire water that surrounds the island.
We also do bioluminescent nighttime tours, which are like uh, an escape into the deep, dark secrets of this you know, glowing phenomenon. It's like this almost cosmic effect. It's just something to be seen. I know everybody in the village. <laughs> and everybody know me. That is the nice thing about here. Tobago is used to the extended family. There was always a grandmother, aunt, or uncle. There was always love. We eat and we drink, we laugh, and everything together. Tobago, in one word to me, beautiful. Beautiful place to live. It gives me great pleasure to be in Tobago and do what I do. The sunsets here are probably bar none, some of the nicest I've seen. I would describe Tobago as one of the clean, serene, and the best place that anyone could come. Be easy, be happy, and have a good time. There is nothing to compare to. This little dot called Tobago exists, and come visit. There you have it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that and now you are all Tobago-fied and uh, in the right uh, mood to continue on on this wonderful journey. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, uh, at the pr prior to this is please, if you have any questions, I'm not sure if Nadine mentioned it, if you have any questions, please put, jot them down so that uh, after each section, um, whoever speaks can answer any of the questions for you. So okay. where is Tobago? Well, Sorry, Stephen, that map, was the, um, that black box um, is actually over the part of the map, just so that you know. Is it? So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll stop sharing and then start again to see okay. if that rectifies the issue. You've got everything else closed on your computer. Yep, absolutely. Everything okay, else. we had this, this last week. Um, I'm not sure why it's happening. Yeah, I haven't yet. Yeah, I've got everything closed. Apologies for this, ladies and gentlemen. But sometimes these little things happen. And usually. Ah, there we go. What's this? That's, oh, no, now it's appeared at the top. Is it still there? Because it appeared. It, it's, it's moved <laughs> to the top. Is, the, is it still there? No, it's still, okay. Okay, you're good now. No, you're good now. Okay. Yeah. Superb. Brilliant. Okay, right. Let us continue. As you can see, this beautiful map of the Caribbean region, uh, Tobago is right at the very bottom of the crest of Caribbean islands. So right down here at the very bottom, actually, hopefully you can see my little arrow and jittling around. Um, we are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, for those who haven't seen this presentation before, um, but our focus today is solely on the little bit of better paradise that is Tobago. Now, getting there, um, this slide, I, I apologize for my, my North American um, guests. Um, this one thus focuses on the UK departures. Um, and uh, as a such, there are um, services out of London Gatwick twice a week. Um, it's a direct service, although the service does touch down in St. Lucia, um, and that operates twice a week. And there's additional services three times a week, again from Gatwick to Port of Spain, where you can transfer down on Caribbean airlines who operate eight or nine services a day. So it's practically a bus service. Um, so lots of different options of getting there from the UK during the week. Uh, but for my North American um, friends, um, there are services, um, seasonal services from New York down to Port of Spain um, uh, and other, I think, I think uh, somewhere in, uh, I can't remember, Houston. Um, and there's a seasonal charter service down from Toronto as well. So there are different options and um, uh, different ways of getting down to Tobago, um, sometimes via Port of Spain and in Trinidad and others um, direct to Tobago. Um, obviously, you guys are all in the travel industry, so for you guys, it's quite easy to, to research these direct services or the indirect services. Um, but yeah, getting to Tobago is relatively easy. 
um, uh, from around the world. Um, speaking of getting to the Tobago, um, one new thing that's happening um, that is in in uh, in construction at the present moment in time is our new airport. Now, this has been in construction for the last couple of years, um, and but the latest information I have um, only received a, a couple of days ago is uh, the expected completion is going to be in 2025. And um, just to show you, this was an image that I, um, I stole off social media only a couple of days ago. <laughs> so this is actually showing the terminals, at, the terminal buildings actually built. So it's not pie in the sky, not talk. It is all actually happening. So very, very soon um, when you come to Tobago, when you send your guests to Tobago, when I next visit Tobago, we will be arriving into these fantastic terminals. All right. So, yes, these that's the newest thing that's happening in Tobago. Um, one of the key queries I always get asked when speaking about this gorgeous little island is when's the best time or what's the best time to travel to Tobago now oops I beg your pardon sorry the reality is Tobago is a year-round destination you can travel whatever time of year you want to um, the first half of the year is typically dry season and um, the winter months through spring uh, so December through to April May um, even up to June sometimes is uh, typically very very dry um, summer months onwards so may june onwards through to november is classed as wet season or rainy season um we do sit outside the hurricane belt um historically and the last time touch wood i'm touching we keep touching wood the last time tobago was hit in any sort of bad way any serious way was 1966 i believe so quite a while ago but obviously you can't control the, their pathways and tropical storms do come near to Tobago. And in fact, Beryl, which was earlier in this year, did pass very close to Tobago. So it does happen. They are acts of God. But, um, you know, typically we do sit outside the hurricane belt. They don't normally come in so close, so low in the Caribbean. Average temperatures are approximately 30 degrees year round. So again, traveling throughout the year, be it in the winter months or in the summer months, um, obviously in the summer, it's just a lot more humid. And then in the winter, you know, over the dry season, it's just a lot drier heat. But average temperatures, mid 20s up to 30s, up to the early 30s year round. So lovely tropical. And one of the key reasons why it's, we are a year round destination is because we have a lot of activities throughout the year, um, through literally throughout the year from um, spring, um, carnivals and festivals during the summer um, and other festivals in autumn and into winter. So yeah, you can travel to Tobago throughout the year at any time. Now, today's focus is going to be on the northeastern tip of Tobago. Um, again, for anyone who's never seen this map before, or hasn't seen Tobago, the airport is positioned down in the southwest. It takes approximately about an hour and a half to traverse from the airport all the way over to this northeastern side. And today's focus is very much gonna be on the town, the little villages of Speyside, Charlottesville, and everything around this sort of peninsula area here. Um, key little things to think about. Yes, the airport is down here. We have Crown Point, we have Pigeon Point down here. So there is a lot of hubbub, a lot of water sports, a lot of activities. You saw that video, um, on the video, you saw the bioluminescence that happens down in this area here. And we have Sunday school, which is like a street party, which happens in Baku down here. The capital of Tobago is Scarborough, and that's positioned down here. We are blessed with a, a, a num numerous amounts of forts, historical sites, um, which some which we might be introduced on this presentation, and loads of activities down in the southwest. All along up to this Caribbean coast, which is absolute paradise, very, very beautiful over to this gorgeous part of Tobago, which is very quiet, very tranquil, and, and very, very beautiful. So I'm not gonna talk anymore. Um, I've introduced the island. I've introduced my guests. Um, so without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce our first uh, talker, um, which is Paige um, from uh, the, um, the Manta Lodge, uh, which is based in this gorgeous little village of Speyside. So, Paige, could you unmute and um, and come on? Good please? morning, everyone. You are there? Fabulous. Yes, I am. Okay. Over to Paige. Hi, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. So, I am from Manta Lodge. I'm the operations manager, and uh, we are located in Speyside. So... Manta Lodge is a beautiful room, 20 rooms, boutique, hotel, and a dive center. 
but we are not just a dive center. We have beautiful rooms that you can come and enjoy, have your family with us, uh, have a wonderful anniversary, birthdays, or just come and relax. All right, so it is breathtaking in space side, fresh air and a beautiful ocean. So can you change the next slide? So this is a picture of Manta Lodge. This is how we look presently. We are still we still have some final touches to get done, but this is this is the color, the theme of our building. Um, and then we have our restaurant, which is Coral Cove. We named our restaurant after the Brain Coral in the um, Space Side. We think it's a great name to represent Space Side. All right, Stephen. So this is basically how our rooms look. We have our standard rooms, but it has not just a standard bed, it's a king bed, sorry, a queen bed, and we have all amenities. So our that screen you see on the television there, we don't have phones in the room. We are using a property management that we communicate to you through our television. So you can send messages, you can, book your room service, your, everything that you need to do is done through the television. So we will communicate with you through that. All our rooms have all the amenities like fridge, safes, microwaves, um, everything that is needed to give you a comfort. You can go ahead. Now, this is, this is amazing. This one is our love suite. This is located at the top of the building. So you have a bird's eye view of the ocean and it has a beautiful patio. So this one has a king size bed and all our rooms are basically almost the same. It is the theme, the colors, it represents each other. So being this on the lot, we have two of those and it is amazing that you can just relax every morning. This is part of the certain area. As you can see, it is on the roof. So it is a relaxing area that you can just, you know, after work or on a vacation or having time for yourself or your family. Next. Now, our restaurant is located right next to the pool. This is our pool areas. Uh, we are changing these the furniture that is there. However, our pool is open. When you are here, we don't have a close time. We do have securities that will monitor you. But our restaurant is very close to the pool, so it is an amazing view over the ocean that you can look at to see right opposite. So as you can see here, we have all amenities, everything that you need while you are in Manta Lodge. And Manta Lodge is not just a dive center. We do want to we have weddings. We have our first wedding in October, I must say. And also we have the fun. You can do bird watching, Charlotteville. You can visit Charlotteville. Um, you can go on different tours. So we our restaurant, I'll focus a little bit, is our menu is an all-day menu. And it is local infused menus so you will get a natural taste of our local flavors our bar we have happy hour we're going to have different activities happening so it's going to be an exciting time being in Manta Lodge that's it that that's is it. it it's supposed to be a transition there I beg your pardon it's not working that's Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Um, can I just ask, Is are these where the suites are? Are these patio areas? Yes. Those okay, are the so... patios. And yes, and that on top of the roof, if you touch the roof, yeah, that is the love suite. So you see those. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are the two, one on either side. Right. And those are the two patio areas. So it's directly on top of the roof. And Stephen, when you look, when you stand on the patio and you look, you just see that the, the full ocean, you get, mm -hmm. you see the little, it's goat island, you see mm -hmm. all the different small islands, it's really a nice view. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, yes, it is a gorgeous little property. I, I do believe, actually, I will, I will add a little, a little secret to this, that um, um, Nadine, who's on air, has actually been here. Haven't you, Nadine? <laughs> I didn't want to. I have actually. You. I didn't want to yeah. out you. 
<laughs> no, I, I have been. I've just literally put a, a little post in the chat box to say I've been and absolutely oh, loved right. it. Okay. Really yeah. loved it. So, um, um, Paige, what, what kind of guest do you think is most suited to Manta Lodge? Well, we are catering, you know, we said we are a dive center, but one of the focuses is everyone is welcome. We are catering for everyone. I think this is more um, a fun fact where people can have, come and have fun. So come and relax because it's a quiet area. So, and that is one of the things that is really, I look forward to that people can come with their families and have an enjoyable time, relaxed, and, you know, away from home, away from the work, you know, self-reflect and, you know, start all over again. And, and focus on some weddings. I, It's small and we can do small weddings. And I, we have our first one and I look at the area and I, I know a lot of people like to get married on the beach and people like small ceremonies and I feel like that can also be part of it um so I think Mantelodge is yes diving we can focus on but also people can come and enjoy a time in Tobago and relax and feel safe and, and feel the natural you know ambience of space side and Tobago because everyone focus on Crown Point but Tobago have space side have its natural beauty and and it's really relaxing the people are amazing and very welcoming so yeah. yeah, so everyone is are welcome to enjoy our small hotel. And you can walk out to local restaurants as well, I believe. Yes, we do have Gemma's close by. We have Blue Waters on the opposite side to us. And then there's a lot of little local home food cooking around the area. So Bird you get watches to is my favorite. The taste of Tobago, you know. Um, what the local food is like, the people, the natural, you know, every morning you go out around the corner, you can get some doubles, you can get home food like bacon, salt fish and all the different things that you 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 like. Um, one of the things that I love for myself that when I came here is um, I love the view of Charlotteville and they have a lot of local food and barbecues on the beach and all that natural feel to it so you can just walk out and, and it's really safe and and really quiet so you can get something yeah so and I it's like, also good for the hikers. sorry yeah. Stephen. Yeah. So it's good for the hikers and the bird watchers as well you can also just walk out yeah all, all i was going to ask you is um the beach opposite are you is that are there any plans to put in facilities on the beach obviously you're brand yes. new now um, yeah that's how I'll, I'll be honest with you it's it's actually clear up a lot that's one of our projects mm -hmm. because a lot of people bathe over there i noticed since we cleared up the area there's a lot of people they go there to bathe so that's mm -hmm. our plan to clear up there because one of the things that i um i vision for us to do uh like a fish friday something on the beach close by mm -hmm. there with music steel pan things like that and I, I can see we can do something that you know bring the localness to the village um, and see what happens but in that area like you know you do some barbecue fish seafood chicken um and people can yes, just hang out in the area as we say lime on the road you know Absolutely. Give them that yes. local You're speaking area. my language now Definitely yes speaking give it some language. lime on the, the road <laughs> so yeah lovely right okay nadine any questions? Have we got any questions from our uh, No, from our I've agents? not seen any questions at all, actually. So, um, yeah, feel free to pop them into the either the chat um, room or the um, question and answer box. Um, and we can, um, Paige can either answer those sort of directly uh, in the chat uh, area uh, or we can come to them a bit later. Excellent. All right. Thank, thank you very much, Nadine. And thank you very much, Paige. Um, You're welcome. I would like to now introduce, I don't know why this one is black, it shouldn't be, there should be some sort of transition going on there, but uh, the, the, the delights of technology today. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to introduce my next guest, um, and it's not working, come on, ah, yes. Right, before I introduce my next guest, um, I just want to show you this one minute clip, which kind of zooms into this area. Some of the things that Paige has mentioned, some of the things that Nadine has mentioned, um, are all kind of encompassed in this little one minute um, clip, if it actually works. There we go. 
Uh, there is supposed to be music, but don't worry. Just imagine a nice little ditty, nice little ditty going on. Look how gorgeous and green this part of the island is. In fact, most of the island is is does look like this anyway. Um, one of the key things about coming to Tobago is you have to love the green because there is so much of it. Um, you are so close to nature, regardless of where you are, particularly up at this end of the island, but regardless, you, you are so close to nature. And one thing we haven't highlighted, and, and um, I don't think Zalani was going to mention it, um, is this area up up at this northeastern side of Tobago is absolutely fantastic for diving. So if you have anyone who loves, who's really, you know, really loves um, great clarity, amazing coral systems, um, then yes, you can you can send them to Tobago, particularly to this part of the island. Um, um, I think uh, Paige mentioned the restaurant being coral because we do have the largest recorded uh, brain coral in the Western Hemisphere, if not the world, in this part of the island. Um, so yeah, fantastic diving, some of the most amazing I've ever I've ever experienced, and I've dived a lot in the Caribbean. So yeah. So that's a little little taster. So before it starts again, Zalani, if you would like to unmute, turn on your video so everyone can see who you are, that you're actually real. Are you I'm there? Not... You are uh... there. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay. I shall start with the first slide for Zalani. Wow. Well... Go ahead, Zalani. Solani. Oh dear, you seem to have lost him right at the right at the what? time when he needs to speak, and he's been his connection has been absolutely perfect all the way beforehand. So we'll give him a few minutes to. to there he is. He's back. He's back. Excellent. He's back. Wonderful. Hi, hi, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice, nice. Um, and my camera is on. I'm not sure what's going on with the camera presently. But I am not seeing myself presently, but okay, no problem. Hi, right, well, morning, everyone. My name is Alani Frank. I'm from Z Birding Toys. And I'm here just to talk a little bit more about Northeast of Tobago. All right. As you can see where the boat arrows are, Northeast Tobago is separated by two seas, the Caribbean. That's where Charlottesville is. And um, on Space Side, that's to the right, on that red arrow, is the Atlantic. All right, next slide, please. Hello. Right, so this photo that you are seeing in front of you is a photo of one of Tobago's best intact water wheel that was built in the late 18th century and completed somewhere around the early 19th century on a 400 acre estate in Speyside. All right, this hotel, this um water wheel is just like about half of a minute walk from Mantel Lodge where one can go take beautiful photos. Where this photo is actually taken from, you can actually host a lot of events on this area, for example, weddings and birthday celebrations and other stuff. Right, again, mm -hmm. where, this, where the water wheel was established after it went into, after sugar cane went into decline, this area actually had one of the first hotels that was built in Speyside. And it was named after the island of Little Tobago, which was previously known as Bird of Paradise Island, the hotel was actually named Bird of Paradise Inn, just that you should know, all right? It actually is no longer somewhere in the mid-19th century, 19th century, which it was basically destroyed, all right? Next slide. All right, so in this view, we have the top right photo is the beautiful village of Spaceyard, as you can see. And then we have Goat Island, which is the bottom left photo. All right. So this is a view of Goat Island and Little Tobago together. Now, Goat Island was also labeled or named as um, the James Bond or Ian Fleming Island, which is not really a factual statement. Yeah. But Ian Fleming did stay on to Goat Island in the mid, somewhere around the 1950s, 1954, 1955. He did stay there for some time doing some short filming on one of his first Golden Eye movies that was set to be aired in 1956, thereabout. 
All right, the photo to the bottom right of the chart that you are seeing is overlooking Little Tobago. And this is a short video, I believe, right, overlooking the island, which is also known as one of the Tobago's most beautiful bird sanctuaries. It's also one of our very important building islands. Uh, people from near and wide visit this island to see one of our star birds of Little Tobago, known as the, uh, the Red Bilge Tropic Bird. A matter of fact, uh, this island fifty stemmed from Birds of Paradise being introduced back in 1909. They went into extinction in 1963. Right? I didn't even mention about Hurricane Florida earlier. It was in 1963, our last major hurricane, which did lots of damage to our forest, destroying over 70% of our forest vegetation and also destroying a large chunk of the population of the uh, of the Birds of Paradise that was once on this beautiful island of Little Tobago. All right. Um, so back in 1990, that's when Sir David Attenborough visited Little Tobago when he did one of his documentaries. That documentary was called Trials of Life. And he was there as he was filming attacks from the Magnificent Frigate Birds on our Tropic Bird. And our Star Birds out there again, it's called the Red Bill Tropic Bird. People from the U.S., England, all over the world fly to Tobago just to get opportunities to see these birds on display at specific times of the year. All right, next. All right, so Little Tobago is actually approximately two kilometers off of the village of Speyside, where one can actually embark on using a glass bottom boat or even a power boat if you want to get there a bit faster. The duration of the of the trip to get over there is approximately 10 to 20 minutes, depending on water currents. Please keep in mind, Little Tobago and Goat Island, these islands are located on the, Atlant on the, on the Atlantic side of Tobago, which is a bit more turbulence on the ocean. But what is good, as you sail to the island, you're going in the direction of the windbreakers because these islands actually form a perfect windbreaker for space side. So you go in the direction of the where there's less turbulence. All right, thank you. Next. All right, so as you leave Speyside, Charlotteville is approximately three miles away from Speyside. All right, before you get down to the beautiful village of Charlotteville, you can actually take a right turn and head all the way up to our observation park, um, a nature park, I want to say, Flagstaff Hill, which was also known as... Uh, as an observation point back in World War II by the Americans. They used this point to overlook the Atlantic and the Caribbean for evading ships. From this view, you can see the photo to your left is a view of, of, a, of a bird sanctuary as well called St. Giles. Now, St. Giles separates the two oceans. On the right of St. Giles, that's the Atlantic, and on the left of St. Giles, that's the Caribbean. All right. On our last Christmas bird count at St. Giles, which was uh, back in 2019, all right, our bird count proved to us that we have over 10,000 nesting pairs of frigate birds on this island nesting at the same time. All right. Now, um, just a bit more left of St. Giles, I don't know if Stephen can put the cursor on that little, 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 little dot right there. There's an island called London Bridge. All right, London Bridge is also a dive site, and there's a tunnel that goes directly through the rocks that one can dive through on a very good day. All right, normally you have to have an expert diver to take you through. I'm not telling anyone to go explore that themselves. All right. <laughs> um. Also from from Flagstaff Hill, you can see that bit of mountainous ridge. I don't know if Steve can use the cursor again. That area on top that has darkly shaded. That's a part of Tobago's forest reserve. This area was actually protected from since 1776. So it's very important to this, to this, to the livelihood, also the sustainability of our Tobagonians, because if these areas were cut down a couple of years ago for estates, Tobago will definitely will not be so green and serene. Proceed, Stephen. As we head down to Charlottesville, you can come at some of the most beautiful sights, beautiful views. Besides Park Star Hill, this area is called Fort Campbellton. Fort Campbellton was built back in the mid 1700s, and it was built with two cannons in their original position to protect the harbor of Charlottesville from invading ships. 
A matter of fact, Charlottesville is also the second harbor of Tobago, or second port of entry of the island besides Scarborough. So in the tourist season or in the busier seasons of the year, you can have over 40 cruise ships coming and landing in this village, right? Things to do such as, next slide. Right, so this is actually a view, sorry, this is actually a view overlooking Charlotteville from Port Campbellton. All right, so this view, the village population is approximately 1,000 people with a mixed culture, a mixed religion as well. A matter of fact, that building with that bright red roof to the top right up there, that's the Methodist Church. And Methodist has been here for over 100 years now. Uh, we have a photo of the beach with two of the guest houses that you can actually stay in Charlotteville. This is Shelton Chalet, which is actually located beachfront. Very beautiful, um, very beautiful guest house, I must say. A matter of fact, just that you all should know that the only village on the northeastern side of Tobago that actually has hotels is Speyside. All the other villages have small guest houses. Proceed. Right, so Charlotteville also has a lot of beautiful gems. The first one I'm going to speak about is Pirates Bay. All right, now to the first photo, the first photo to the extreme left, which you can see someone walking down some steps. I mean, if you guys like exercising and you wish to walk to the beach, this step is up, this stairway or staircase, sorry, is approximately 190 stairs down to the beach, which one can embark on a beautiful venture down to, down to Pirates Bay. Right, so the middle, the one to the, the second one, sorry, from the left, which is the one with the flag, is a flag that represents for Pirates Bay. Mind me, the name was given a couple of years ago by the British because they used to come dock the ships here and people do believe that they were hidden gems on the beach, which many have come in search of and never got successful, but people are still trying. All right, so there we have an aerial view overlooking Pirates Bay, which you can see a bit of the coral nursery to that top left of that photo, right? Somebody there's Eric has his coral nursery and also there's beautiful snorkeling and diving from the beach. And the photo to the extreme right on your embark, or if you embark on all from Charlottesville, this is one of the few points that you would get your encounter for taking that staircase all the way down to Pirate Speed. Proceed. Also, this beach that you are looking at here presently is called Lover's Bay. And the name has true meaning, I want to say to everyone. Now, Lover's Bay is actually another hidden gem that people love to come and explore. You normally have to take a boat to get to this area, right? Because of the fact it's a rocky terrain to get down to the beach. I would never advise someone to try going down to that area because it will not be successful, okay? So you take a boat, you take small boats, and you go to the beach. It's a beautiful beach for snorkeling, as you can see the color of the sand. As the waves turn the sand, they actually give you a pink effect. Now, a lot of people ask me on tours, how did that beach, how does this beach get a name of Pink Sand Beach or Lovers Bay? Pink Sand, it's because of the amount of coral that you have in the area, right? There's a lot of fish that feed on the corals, like, for example, parrotfish or whatever parrotfish feed on these sort of corals. And they pass off, they're dropping, they're dropping a good parrotfish, pass off a sand. And that's what makes perfect and beautiful beaches such as Lovers Bay. All right. Now, again, this beach can take a capacity of up to about 50 persons in low tide and about 15 to 10 persons on full tide, probably two. All right. So a lot of people use this beach as a getaway and private moment to spend time together. And the local guys always have the thing to say, if you don't sign a name on the rocks, you will not be able to come back to Pirates Bay, guys. I'll answer that in the comments, okay? Next photo, Stephen. Right. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that everyone enjoyed my presentation today. All right. Thank you for listening to me. Just remember, guys, Tobago is just another piece of paradise. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Z. Um, that was that was wonderful. I have to say that was truly, truly wonderful. Um, hopefully, you guys um, um, sort of got some of the the sort of secret secret um elements that that area has to offer i mean look i i know tobago very well i've been there many many times and i learned a couple of new things just now um and and one of the reasons is because z is from that area z you're you're from charlotte aren't you is it charlotte or space 
Hello? Yeah, sorry, there? sorry. Well, 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 <laughs> all right, well, a little about me is that I actually grew up between both villages. So I'm actually a bit of Charlotte and I'm actually a bit of space side. So I don't know what I'm drawing. Is space, is this space Charlotte or Charlotte space? I'm not sure. <laughs> but, just, um, just eat and just North East Tobago. You're just North East Tobago only. That's what my dad. So for folks who may know me, my dad is one of the guys who actually established glass bottom boating in space side. So I have a wide understanding and knowledge of that whole environment of space because I've been doing it from since a child. And growing up in Charlottesville, just being a part of the ocean, I've just been all about the place in this area, snorkeling, spear. Well, at the time, spear fishing, but now I am actually a bit deeper into conservation, so I don't participate in any form of hunting. I just go for recreation, for sea, for observation, for scientific work, and that's basically it. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, thank you so much again, Z. That was that was absolutely perfect. Exactly what uh, we anticipated. In fact, more than what we anticipated. It was um, very knowledgeable and very very interesting. Um, uh, Nadine, do we have any questions at all for Z? Any questions at all about um, some of the wonderful things he's been talking about for the last fifteen minutes? Um, so uh, we've got one, in, uh, which is. Is Fort Campbellton also used for weddings? And can you have weddings on on uh, Lover's Bay as well? Um, I think actually that would probably be a Sandy question. Whether or not you could have weddings I, I mean, to I, be perfectly honest with you. I didn't hear the question, Stephen. What, could they have weddings up at Fort Campbellton or and or well, um Lover's Bay? All right. Well, well. Um, so, well, if I jump back a little bit, if I talk a little bit about the wedding spots that are beautiful in Northeast Tobago, all right, I can highlight a few. So, I don't know if you want to take a note of this. Now, starting from Space Side, you do have a few beautiful spots in Space Side. Space Side has beaches like um, it's not going to. Right, this map, Stephen. Okay, stay right here. Go back. Go back. I want the the view, the aerial view. Overlooking the village of Speyside. Right, okay, stop. So in this map, Stephen, if you take your cursor and you put it to the extreme right of the village, okay, yes, right in that area, there's a little beach in that area called Indian Bay. Indian Bay is a private estate owned by a guy from Trinidad. And sometimes he allows people to use his grounds. He has a beautiful grounds there. If you even say if you want to use the beach, it's a sheltered beach. So you can also use the beach at Indian Bay. It's very, very beautiful over there. And as you go a bit more to where the water wheel was, so yes, the water wheel area just at that back of the ground. So I guess Mantelos can also look into this. At the back of that water wheel has a really nice flat area. You can also do weddings at the water wheel. Perfect spot for weddings, right? Flagstaff Hill. Flagstaff Hill is very beautiful for bigger weddings and so forth. I wouldn't advise someone to have a wedding at uh, at Fort Campbellton. It's just a bit too small. I mean, the venue here might need, might might hold about five persons or six persons comfortable, or ten persons, but it's not a very big ground for wedding. Pirates Bay is a good spot for wedding. In Lovers Bay, I would not really recommend a big wedding, but a small wedding can can actually take place there. And there's also a grounds that could be rented at Manorfoby Cottages in Charlottesville. Very, very beautiful spot again for wedding events. Malawabi cottages, you can take a note of that as well. Beautiful spot for weddings. So that's all the spots that I can actually think about and tell you that can and bring the nature to your wedding events if one chooses to have a wedding in this side of the island. Lovely. That's great. Thank thanks, um, thanks, Alani. Um, and Sandy's been uh, sort of reiterating what you've been saying about Lovers Bay and Port Campbellton being good for what she describes as micro weddings, um, very intimate spaces. So, but, you know, obviously, if someone's traveling from overseas, they may well only be traveling as a, a couple and maybe a couple yeah. of friends. So it could be the most romantic venue ever that they could ever have dreamed of um there were a couple of questions there for manta lodge which and um, Paige has been um valiantly answering on the in the chat area and um, one was the distance from the airport um and uh Paige is telling us that it's about one hour 23 minutes or approximately just under 50 kilometers 
um, from the airport and also um, whether there are twin beds at um, Manta Lodge and Paige has replied um, Paige just make sure you're replying to everyone um, rather than the hosts and the panelists um, so that everyone can see the answer but yes they do have some twin beds in some of the rooms at Manta Lodge um, one of the things I was going to add to all of this is if you're interested if you're a social media follower um, and if you are a follower of the um, recent race across the world that was won by Alfie Watts and his friend Owen. Um, Alfie, we managed to get Alfie out to Tobago a couple of weeks ago and he stayed in one of those two lovely little um, B&Bs that Zalani pointed out to on the beach at Charlotteville, the one to, on the right hand side, um, directly on the beach. And we had him volunteering with ERIC, the Environmental Research um, Institute of Charlotteville, where they do coral replanting. He also went to Corbin Local Wildlife, um, where he saw some rescue and rehabilitation of some of the, the forest animals as well. Um, so if you don't follow Alfie Watts on social media, you should, because he's got some lovely footage there of Tobago um, from a couple of weeks ago, and he absolutely loved it. He had lunch cooked for him at Pirates Bay, uh, and he declared that the best lunch he's ever had. <laughs> so, or dinner, maybe it was dinner, but anyway, it was the best. He, the he best food it, he's ever eaten, the best food he's, he's ever, ever tasted ever eaten or something, or something like that. along yeah, those lines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, that's our, our most recent claim to fame. So, um, just to add, sorry, just to add to that, if anyone does want to follow social media, um, I, I, my social media is, I, the only one I'm on is, is Facebook. I'm a, I'm a little bit old, I know. Um, but I do share all of these, element, all these things and um, other bits and pieces from, from Tobago as well. So if you want to follow me, I am Stephen Smith Tobago, Stephen with a PH, Smith with a Smith and uh, Tobago as it is. So find me at uh, Stephen Smith PH, uh, Stephen Smith Tobago, and uh, follow me, and I will share as much as I can to you all. All ah, right. Okay. So we've got um, Joyce. We need, she needs hotel recommendations. So, um, Stephen, how would Joyce quickly get to hotel recommendations, perhaps through Tobago Beyond? Um, yes, there are. There will be. Um, there's a uh, what's it called? It's got, there's an accommodation list on Tobago Beyond. But what I will do is there is always a follow up email to all of you who have attended. So what I will do is attach um, uh, uh, the link to that hotel uh, guide. But we also have a, a PDF showing the sort of most popular hotels that are sold on the island um, from from tour operators around the world, as well as sort of booking engines. So, yeah, I'll. I'll share that link to that pdf on that email as well as the link to the website so mm -hmm. yeah okay and, and what we're seeing more and more of even though it's a tiny island um we are seeing multi-center itineraries coming more so you might uh, put someone in for a few days down on the south of the island and then uh, perhaps send them up to manta lodge to enjoy Speyside and charlotteville um for the second Thank part you. of the day absolutely spot on again always we always suggest there's so much to see. Yes, this is a wonderful, yes, we spent this presentation today is focused very much on the Northeast and how gorgeous and beautiful and remote. Um, but um, part two is going to be on the Northern Caribbean coast and part three will be down in the Southeast. All three of these sides of the islands are unique in their own way and very, very beautiful with their own little offerings and little secrets. And yes, we, I, I generally, whenever I speak to people face to face, to consumers or to trade, to center it. Definitely, definitely to center it because there are so many unique little things and little experiences. I pointed out some of the sort of nightlife and the vibe that the south, the south um, west area has, um, which is totally different to this northeastern side. So you're absolutely right, Nadine. Definitely consider to centering, particularly with the southeast as well as perhaps this area up up here in the northeast or even on the sort of northern Caribbean coast, because they will get um, a distinct taste two different sides of the island. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we've got Joanne who says she's she did a multi center and she went back mount, mountain biking at Mount Irvin <laughs> with Tobago mountain bikes with Eamon. Yeah. Um, so and that's another lovely thing yep. about Tobago is it is such a small community that you very quickly do get to know the guides and yeah. uh, by by name. And you know when we when Zalani comes over to the UK for the bird fair, people you know come to see him specifically because they remember yep. him. 
personally and so um you know if you've got a, a client that you know is very discerning that perhaps has a very special interest um and they enjoy authenticity and getting stuck into local communities local cuisine um and love meeting people and making friends overseas then Tobago is one of those fantastic destinations where you can do that right so moving swiftly on um, it's time for us to pose a quick fire question with a chance to win a reward through the Tobago Rewards Programme. Um, and what I need you all to do is make sure that you are on the on the uh, webinar chat, you're set to replying to everyone rather than the hosts and panellists only. So make sure that you've got your settings there. And um, I'm going to ask Stephen to drum up a question based on something that we've been told during this webinar and then what will happen is the first person or the first few people to to um answer will be put into a a, a draw which sarah is actually going to do tomorrow um from her luxury hotel in antigua <laughs> and um <laughs> this is so, definitely an international international yes, presentation really is, isn't it? it really is and oh yes and just before, uh, while stephen's rapidly thinking of what question he wants to ask um a lot of you are asking for copies of the presentation which i'm sure stephen will be able to do um but just to so that you know in case you haven't seen they are all hosted on the my booking rewards website you click on the webinar tab and the most recent ones are on there uh, and that takes you to my booking rewards youtube channel so you can and then you can speed through bits that perhaps you got you know and you missed a bit so you can you know fast forward to that one and um, go through any of the pertinent notes that you need and um, go on to tobagobeyond.com um, for any of the sort of like the image images and, and information about things to do, special interest tours, hotels to stay in, where to eat and all that sort of thing. So that's really easy to do. Uh, otherwise, contact Stephen, Stephen at amglimited.biz. And I'm sure he will be able to answer any questions and provide you with any assets, materials that you might need for your own social media Um So, uh, yeah, without further ado, <laughs> Stephen. Are you yes. ready? Are I you am ready. ready I am ready. I am ready. Fingers poised. Okay. Go. During Zalani's presentation, he mentioned a certain beach called Lover's Bay. What colour was the sand that he said? Oh, cracky. That was very quick. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my word. <laughs> whoa, yeah, oh, whoa. oh, okay. <laughs> brown. Brown. No, not brown. <laughs> 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 my gosh that was that was way too okay. easy that was way too easy very good so i, I think yes, everyone asked... is a winner <laughs> yeah everyone's a winner but the first one i think was chrissy chrissy mckenzie so your name's definitely going into the draw and we've got a lot of other answers so pink was definitely the color yes thanks to the coral um and you'll find that um around the caribbean where the, the the sand is genuinely pink um but you're not allowed to take any of it away with you unfortunately so leave, leave it leave it where it where it is pictures <laughs> pictures of what you take away with you and remember and your happy memories that's what you take away with you. Yeah. so that just remains for um me on behalf of um all of the agents who've attended to say thank you to Stephen and to Zalani and to Paige for taking the time. Paige is an extraordinarily busy woman because she is actually in the final process of getting the hotel open. Um, and so we cannot wait to hear from her that it really is fully up and running. So congratulations, Paige, on an immense achievement. Um, and to Zalani, thank you so much for sharing all that love um, about your home. Um, we really appreciate it. And thank you, Stephen, for collating all of the presentations um, and making it easy for everybody. I'm sorry about that black box that was permanently on the screen. Um, I'll be <laughs> speaking always... to Sarah and see if we can work. Someone said it was something to do with the toolbars, but I'm not sure. And we might have to speak yeah. to Zoom because it happened last week as well. And we've never seen it before. So apologies. Yeah, I've never that. seen it before. I've never seen that before. So. And yeah. thank you, everybody. Um, it's been fantastic um, learning about Tobago. Look out for parts two and three of The Secrets of Tobago coming soon. <laughs> thank you, guys. All thank right, you then. very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, Zalani. Bye. And thank you, agents. Thank you. Bye, guys. Be good. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Zalani. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.